In this video, we're going to take a look at how to graph logarithmic functions. So a logarithmic function is something that looks like this. y equals log, we say base b of x, log base b of x. So a log is an inverse of an exponential function. We've seen exponential functions is something like b to the x, okay? And uh, we call uh, this inverse of this function is called a logarithmic function of base b, and we write it log base b of x, okay? Uh, so uh, in terms of inverses, we might say it's the f a negative 1 of x, all right? Now, an important thing here to note is that b has to be bigger than 0, and b cannot be 1. The reason for that is this. Think about this exponential function. If b is a, a negative number, well, it bounces back and forth. All right, So b has to be a positive number. It can't be 0. That doesn't make any sense. And if b is 1, 1 to any power is just 1. So it's not really an exponential function. So before we graph functions of logarithmic type here, we need to understand what a logarithm is, all right? So the important connection here is this. If we have b to the y is equal to x, that's the same as saying y is equal to log base b of x. Or another way of saying is that y is the power we put on b to get x. y is the power we put on b to get x. The logarithm is the power. So we've got to understand that question. So here we have a log base 2 of 8. That equals x. Well, the question we're asking is, what is the power we put on 2 to get x? Well, if we rewrite this using this rule above, this means 2 to the x is equal to 8. And a lot of time it's useful to rewrite it. So we ask ourselves, what is the number that we can put on x? On, on 2 to get 8, well, that is 3, because 2 to the 3rd is 8. Caitlin. All right, how about this? Uh, we got 2 to the x uh, equals 1 8. So we rewrite it in exponential form. Ask ourselves, well, what can we put in the x to get 1 8? Well, this is flipped upside down, so we know that, that this 8 is 2 to the 3rd. And so if we have the 2 to the 3rd down below, we can say that this is 2 to the negative 3rd. And so we see that x has to be negative 3. So if we can rewrite one side in terms of the same base, then we can find our logarithm. Well, what's going on here? 25 is equal 5 to the x power. This x is the exponent. The 5 is the base. And, well, we know what that is. We know that 5 squared is what 25 is, so x is 2. Well, how about this one? 3 to the x is 1 ninth. Well, we know that 1 ninth is 1 over 3 squared, and so 3 to the x is, let's try that again there, uh, same as 3 to the negative second, okay? So x is negative 2. All right, so again, we're asking ourselves, what is the power we put on 3 to get 1 ninth? Well, that power is negative 2, okay? So how about this question? Can you find a logarithm of a non-positive number? That is, can you find log base 2 of x equals something? Well, uh, I'm sorry, log base 2 of 0? Well, that would mean 2 to some power is 0. Is there any number that you can put on 2 to get 0? No, there's not. You put a negative number in there, you're going to get a, a decimal. So 2 to any power will not be 0. Think about the fact that an exponential function has an asymptote. It never is 0. Well, how about this? 2 to the x here is negative 8. Well, uh, if 2 to the x can't be 0, 2 to the x will never be negative. That's impossible. So the key is this, is that when we have, we, we never want to take a power or logarithm of a 0 or a negative number, all right? So with that background, let's find some logarithms here, okay? So we're going to graph this. And we're going to have uh, 16. X is 16. We want to graph X, uh, Y equals log base 2 of X. 
So we have log base 2 of 16. So we ask ourselves, what is the power we put on 2 to get 16? Well, the power we put on 2 to get 16 is 4. All right, what about 8? Log base 2 of 8. What's the power we put on 2 to get 8? Well, that's 3. Okay, and the next nice one to do is 4. What's the power you put on 2 to get 4? It is 2. And you start to see a nice pattern there. What's the power you put on 2 to get a 2? Well, the power you put on 2 is 1. What's the power you put on 2 to get 1? That's 2 to the 0. What's the power you put on 2 to get 1 half? That's negative 1. And to get 1 fourth? 1 fourth. So these are all powers of 2. Okay? The y values are the powers. These are the powers you put on 2 to get these. Okay? And if we graph this, uh, we get a nice, neat relationship. So we get these points here. We got 16, 4, 8, 3, 4, 2, so on and so forth. And we get real close. We got a half is negative 1, a fourth is negative 2, an eighth is negative 3, and a sixteenth, so on and so forth. This will get closer and closer to 0, but remember, we cannot take the logarithm. Oh, let's try a different one there. We cannot take the logarithm of a negative number or a 0. So 0 is a domain restriction. Let's try that one more time. Ah, come on. Let's get it. There we go. So we have an asymptote here. It's going to get closer and closer, but never touch it, okay? Uh, and so we have a domain restriction. The domain for this is all numbers from x, no, sorry, from 0, not including 0, to infinity. You can't take the log of 0. Okay, that's the key there. All right. Well, how about uh, log base 3? Why don't you try it out there? See if you can fill that in and get a graph real quick. We should get these values here. What is the power you put on 3 to get 9? It's 2. What is the power you put on 3 to get 3? It's 1. So on and so forth. And if we plot these points, we get these guys right here, 9, 2, 3, 1, 1, 0, and then it's going to come underneath this. So it's going to be lower than this here. As we go out there, that one should have an arrow on it. And we're going to have an asymptote down here as well. Okay, notice it always goes to the same point, 1, 0. They have this point in common, and that will be true for any log that is not uh, transformed or translated. All right? So, uh, but if we have a larger base, it's going to be closer to the x-axis here. Okay? So if we had log base 10, it would be even closer, even lower down here. Now let's look at some translations. We've translated lots of different functions before. We're going to translate a common logarithm. Now a common logarithm is base 10. When we have base 10, we usually just write it as log of x. So if there's no number down here, it means log base 10, all right? Um, another important number is what we call our natural logarithm, e, which is about 2.718. That's a number that comes up in nature a lot, and it's very useful when things that deal with limits and calculus, all right? And so when we write, instead of writing log base e, we're going to write y equals ln of x, which means natural log, spelled backwards, log natural, I guess. So anyways, uh, y equals ln x just means log base e, and e is just this number, about 2.718, all right? So let's explore a little bit. We're going to see some results that we should expect, okay? Um, try this. Go ahead and pause the video here and, and graph some of these, and uh, we're going to just do a common logarithm. On your calculator, you have a key that says log, log, of x, all right? And uh, um, so you're going to type this, y equals log x. Um, here, be careful, close the parentheses. When you graph this on your calculator, you need to close the parentheses there, and the plus 2 needs to be outside. Same thing here. Because if we put the parentheses like this one here, that means something very different. So graph them and see what you get. 
If you have access to Desmos, that might even be better because sometimes uh, your graphing calculators don't have good resolution. So either on Desmos or the graphing calculator, you can try that. And you should get something like this if you've checked it out. Y equals log base 10 of X is just kind of like the ones we saw. It goes through z uh, 1, 0. Uh, if we got plus 2, it's moved up 2. So that point 1, 0 has moved up and everything with it. Uh, if it has minus 2, it's going to go down 2. Something like that. So that point uh, 1, 0 has moved down. Uh, if we have plus 2 inside, instead of crossing at 1, 0, this is going to go left 2. Okay. And so our asymptote is going to be right here. And when we're graphing this by hand, we'll put that asymptote. And it looks like this, maybe not quite so high. Uh, minus 2 is going to go right 2. And so instead of having the axis as our asymptote, there's our new asymptote. And it goes like this. Uh, negative is going to flip it upside down. Put a negative on the outside, and it should look the same as it did, but flipped vertically. Here we're going to flip it horizontally because the negative's on the inside. So it's going to cross at negative 1, 0, and have y intercept as an as y axis as an asymptote. There it is. This one's going to stretch. It's still going to go through 1, 0, but it's going to go a little higher. Inside, it's going to stretch uh, uh, horizontally here. Outside is vertically. Stretch, this is horizontally. So it's going to be two times farther away from the axis. So instead of crossing at 1, 0, it should cross at 2, 0. Actually, hold on a second. Whoa, hold your horses. That's wrong, right? Because it's opposite from what we'd expect. So it's actually going to shrink. Okay, so this is going to shrink by a factor of 1 half. So if here's 1, 0, it's going to cross at 1 half, 0. Watch out. Don't fall into the trap that I almost did there. Okay, uh, it's going to shrink because it's Horizontal. Horizontal is always backwards. Okay, let's put it all together. It's going to be upside down. It's going to move left 2 and down 1. So if you pick that point 0, 1, uh, let's see, what is it? Pick that point 0, 1, it's going to go left 2 and down 2. Okay, so that, that x-intercept is going to be right down here. We've gone left 2, so our axis of symmetry is right here. And it's flipped upside down, so it's going to come down kind of like that. So we see all the same transformations. A is going to give us a vertical stretch and flip if it's negative. B is going to give us a horizontal stretch of 1 over B and a flip. So if this is 2, we'd have 1 half, which is really a shrink. All right. Uh, and C is a horizontal translation. It's going to be a left if it's positive, uh, right if it's negative. That's the same old stuff. And then D is going to be a vertical translation up if it's positive or negative if it's down. Well, as we, as we saw there, uh, the domain of uh, a function we've got to watch out for for a logarithm. Okay, The, the domain of a logarithm is, is any non-positive number. All right, so we can't put zero, we can't put negatives in there. So like this function, we want to state the domain of these functions. What can we put into log base 3 of x? Well, we can put anything from zero to infinity. No negative numbers, no zero. Well, what can go into here? Well, anything that makes x plus 4 greater than zero, because if x plus 4 is zero, we got a problem, or if it's negative. Well, if we solve that, we see that x is greater than negative 4. In interval notation, that's from negative 4 to infinity. Uh, how about this? What number can you put in here? Well, you can put anything that makes 4x greater than zero. And what is that? Well, divide by 4, and we see that x is just greater than zero. So that's from zero to infinity. And how about this guy here? So what can you put in for the domain? Well, this 10 does not change the domain. That's just going to move it up or down. The domain is all determined by what's inside, what makes x minus 5 greater than 0. Well, x is greater than 5 in this case. So we have from 5 to infinity. And last but not least, does a 7 matter? No, it doesn't matter. All that matters is what's inside. What makes 2x plus 5 greater than 0? 
Subtract 5, divide by 2. X is greater than negative 5 halves. And so we have negative 5 halves to infinity. Okay? Now I've got to watch out. Let, let me tweak this real quickly. What if we make this a negative? Make this a negative. Well, you have negative 2X is greater than negative 5. And you've got to divide by negative 5. And remember, or negative 2, actually. So if we divide by negative, let's fix that if we can. Come on. Uh, divide by negative 2. And so X would be less than 5 halves in that case. And so that would be all numbers from uh, 5 halves in this changed example down to negative infinity. All right, that would be the idea there for the changed one. All right, well, uh, that's how you do it. That's how we deal with logarithms. So take it from there. Good luck.